Hello, and welcome to another fun-filled Sunday. Yeah. So I think what we're going to continue to do today is we're going to continue to just work on a little bit of material for the theme song. And I realized a couple of things when I was going over the material for the last episode. And that is that you know, I didn't really, first off, I didn't really want to come out with what the theme song was going to be and sort of put it on an episode until number 15, because just putting it on number 14 was weird. And also, I wanted to go ahead and have some sort of beginning layer to it, some sort of brooding something. And I always remembered back to this really cool thing that happened and I had to really I had to actually step back through the episodes and remember, oh, there was this thing that happened on uh episode 6, the user community episode where um you actually what what I did was I mapped the control of the mix on the reverb uh from a similar synthesizer actually, one that had a few or a couple of these multi-wave oscillators as well. And um, I actually mapped the signal, or sorry, the mix control uh, to a key on my keyboard so that I actually was able to control the mix of it when I hit the key. So really cool, and um, what I wanted to do was basically just work on a little bit of a just sort of brooding pad intro that I could use for the beginning of uh, the theme, because I wanted to go ahead and keep that famous uh, intro that I've been using at the beginning, which if uh, you haven't figured out what that's from by now, then uh, good luck. Um, but. Before that, I wanted to play just some just brooding, you know, here's what's to come. And um, that's what this is. I'm just going to kind of work on something for a little while. It may not take too long. Um, but I want you to kind of hear a little bit of shape, a little bit of rhythm, but a little bit of something to come. And I also have some controls mapped variously throughout. And actually what I'm using is this Squares uh, Ensemble from the Reactor Blocks Factory Library. So 
Um, the factory library has a ton of cool stuff, just poking through it, you know? Awesome, awesome stuff. And this is probably the closest thing that um, was just out of the box, ready to go, um, that was similar to what I had going on the user community episode, episode six. So I'm just gonna keep this going. Pretty cool. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this ensemble. Ooh. So now we're really diving into the unknown. Um, so this is an ensemble again that was made by the factory library, but that's not going to stop me from putting what I think would be really cool into it. Um, so I'm going to look for actually in the factory library or not, sorry, not the factory library. I'm going to look in my community library that I have for something that does any sort of auto panning. So, or just anything weird with pan, you know, things that kind of move uh, move the noise across the stereo spectrum. What is this thing? This is a novel panning block based on the nonlinear circuit Segway module for Eurorack. Nice. The Segway uses a vectral shape. The pan uses a vectral to shape the pan voltage, which this block does not model. Simply put, this block takes two mono inputs and pans them in different directions in the stereo field. This can be used in a number of ways. With one input and two outputs, this is a regular panner. With two inputs and one output, this is a regular crossfader. With one input and one output, this is a regular VCA. Two inputs and two outputs, this is an unusual panner. So I like unusual. So what I wanna do actually is what this has going is it has going the rounds reverb straight in to the stereo out. <clears throat> and that's cool. 
And I actually want to take this panning module and just put it right in there and see what that's like. So let's just put this guy over here and I don't know what this is going to do, but we shall see. I really like that. So I'm not sure what it's doing, but, and I'm just, I've got my information on. There's nothing. Okay. Controls the pan of the left input. The right input is panned in an opposite fashion. I see. So if I this, this way, there's a part of the sound that also pans the other way. So it's not just a left right panner because I basically have a stereo signal going into it and a stereo signal passing through it. It, it does just as it says, behaves unusually. But that's kind of what I wanted to happen. So what I want to do actually is I want to use um, a combination of, well, let's just see what's going into, yeah, what I want to do is hook up some modulation. So let's go back into edit. And let's see, ADSR mod, let's see, yeah, this, see, this is going every which way. This is going into mostly, looks like mod, with the exception of the oscillators, it looks like it's going mostly into mod A. And this LFO going into mod B. All right, so let's kind of do the same thing. Let's hook up mod A into that, and let's hook this up into mod... Sorry, let's hook the LFO into mod B, and the envelope into mod A. And now that we have some modulation... Um, here's the mod... a mental note so this is again a walkthrough of what I'm using on this episode pretty straightforward uh, I am using the um, reactor blocks factory library squares ensemble and then all I did was I added a euro react flip pan module to this thing and it is killer I'm loving it it just does weird things to, yeah, as it says, with well, a stereo signal does fucking wacky things to the signal. And now you can modulate it and do whatever with it. So think about this as an audio plugin. Think about this as a, just whatever. The mind runs wild, but this is cool. Super, super cool.
Yep, that's damn cool. That is damn cool, son. Um, definitely loving this flip pan thing. Uh, certainly, certainly cool. And I think that that last section was probably the coolest. I mean, the sections before it, super sweet, and we have them all recorded throughout the episode. Uh, but that last section, and I'm going to make mental note, that was probably the coolest one. I like that one the most, just off the top. Um, so that'll probably be used for the intro. And then I have enough. Wow. Very nice. So within episodes 10, yeah, let me think. Yeah, that's right. Within episodes 10 through 14, this one, we've basically made the drum track in episode 10, the bass track in episode 11, the guitar track in episode 12, and then the polyplex, the, the, the beefy drum track, I guess you'd say, in episode 13. And then in this one, I just felt it needed some sort of an intro, some sort of a something, and then that can sort of play, or different parts of this maybe can play throughout the rest of it. And um, this is gonna be fun. There's a lot of stuff to edit down, um, a lot of really cool material spread out over <laughs> anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes a piece. So really awesome. <laughs> really, really, really awesome. <laughs> um, I think that's going to about do it, boys and girls. Until next time.